FMS makes a lot of really good aircraft. The Viper 70mm, for example, is one of the best trainer jets in my experience. It teaches people how to fly bigger airplanes. The FMS F-18 70mm doesn't just teach you how to fly bigger planes, it teaches you how to suffer. I'm John from Two Brothers Radio Control and I'm going to explain why I think the FMS Hornet is a really good choice for your next step up from beginner focused airplanes. It looks like it might be one of those beginner airframes, what with the fixed stabilators and the elevator tips, but don't let that fool you. It's a Hornet and it stings like one too. If you can master flying this jet, you're definitely ready for bigger airframes. Until you get really good at landing this jet, I would suggest that you prepare to repaint it after a few flights, because it's going to get scuffed up. A lot. But that's the beauty of the FMS Hornet. It's pretty durable, and replacement parts aren't very expensive either. It handles these impacts and keeps on flying. Jets with a narrow wheelbase will land like this if you're not perfect every time. Work on your technique. Keep the jet straight as it lands and you'll get it down. This isn't a problem unique to the Hornet either, F-16s are like this too. Consider it a trainer for landing jets with narrow wheelbases and you'll save the finish on your more expensive jets. Landing will definitely be the hardest part of flying this jet due to the narrow wheelbase. Anything narrow has a tendency to tip over on the ground with steering input at speeds even marginally above walking speed. But when you get it right, this jet makes you look great when it lands. Just be careful to keep a light hand on the rudder while you're steering at higher speeds. The same advice works for takeoff too. Focus on slowly throttling up and keeping the jet lined up on the runway with tiny corrections, because anything major will potentially flip it over or seriously scuff the paint up. It's foam though, so don't get too attached to it, and remember that what was scuffed can be repainted. You can always patch foam and paint right over it without worry. If it wasn't meant to fly, it should stay in your collection as a display piece. Sometimes the battle scars tell a neat story about what the model's been through. Let's get right into acro performance, because this jet flies almost like it has fully moving stabilators. FMS engineered it really well. While it does admittedly land like a sack of bricks at times, it makes up for it in the air with graceful acro potential and hardly ever fights you. With an SMC 3600 pack shoved as far back as it can sit, the jet's center of gravity is perfect for me. I don't recommend that you fly like this though, not unless you're willing to use a pitch gyro to dampen the control input and provide some stability. This is a relatively tail heavy setup, but the jet will fly well with the 3600 pack shoved up a couple of inches with no ill effects. Sometimes people get lost in the weeds wondering what exact center of gravity positions work for them. What I suggest is to start somewhat nose heavy and work back slowly until you're happy with how responsive the jet flies for you. Keep in mind that you're seeing this jet fly on the edge of its performance envelope. It'll fly similar if the CG isn't as far back as it is here. Don't feel that you have to copy my CG setups, but don't be afraid to experiment and find what works best for you. Because the only right answer to how should my jet fly is however you enjoy the way it flies for you. The nice thing about the Hornet is that the AS3X gyro tamps down most of the bad behavior and, truthfully, it probably won't land too difficult if the CG is a bit nose heavier than this. But it'll still be a handful because it's a Hornet and the plan form doesn't lend itself to being super stable. This is the best Cobra maneuver that you'll get on a jet without full flying stabs. Not quite as dramatic as the Freewing F-18, but pretty impressive considering what it is. Compared to the Freewing F-18 though, you'll see what I mean. Full flying stabs are the best way to fly a scale jet, but they also take a lot more skill because a stabilator exerts much more force on the airframe and can easily stall it out if you're not used to how sensitive it is. I'm sure that there's a way to mod in full flying stabs on the FMS Hornet, but you'd have to be willing to do a lot of work to make it happen. The FMS Hornet is fast. For a 70mm jet, it's got a ton of thrust and can haul around the sky like it has very little weight to it at all. This actually helps significantly because most airframes bite you when you can't keep the airspeed up while maneuvering. You actually have to put in some work to make this jet stall so hard that you can't recover. One easy way to put in that work and get it to stall reliably is trying to make it high alpha. It does not like this and will not do it sustainably. It'll do it inverted, but it wing rocks severely without falling out. I'm going to take this time right now to address this comment that you see on the screen from an earlier vid on our FMS A10. When we test things like this that the full-scale aircraft isn't going to do or perhaps isn't capable of at all, 
That isn't a criteria for the review score on the jet. It's a fun thing that we do to see if it's possible. It certainly can help with adding to the final score that we give, but we never take away from the score based on what it can't do that it was never designed to do. Inverted high alpha on a jet like this is not what we base our reviews around. To that end, it's a foam airplane and is not a turbine equipped full scale jet. We review foam airplanes based on what foam airplanes can do. What the full scale can do doesn't matter unless we can replicate it in model scale. That all being said, I personally feel that the FMS Hornet is a great choice to move up to if you're ready to begin flying models that have a lot of power and are harder to fly. This one isn't quite a trainer, but it will help teach you the importance of landing well, keeping a straight track on the ground and managing airspeed, and it looks fantastic for what it is, too. The only real drawback that concerns me is related to all Hornets, because narrow wheelbases can really make you suffer if you have a heavy hand on the stick, and if it begins to stall, it may be unrecoverable if it's too low. You'll definitely want to spend a lot of time getting used to how a Hornet flies and stalls prior to committing yourself to going crazy with it. The stock reflex gyro should be enough for almost anyone, but I personally work with AS3X because I fly Spectrum, and I prefer being able to adjust the setup at the field with my transmitter without having to bring a computer to program the gyro. If you fly nose heavy, you won't need a gyro to keep it stable, but if you throw an SMC 3600 pack as far to the rear as it'll sit, you'll be wishing you'd installed one. For the final review, I'm going to go ahead and say that this jet is personally an 8.5 out of 10 for me. It was initially a 9.5 during the first maiden flight, but noticing how easy it was for it to get messed up on the ground made me consider reevaluating the score. I can fly damn near anything pretty well, and if I have a hard time landing it, you might too. So it's something to watch out for. The wheelbase is a not insignificant concern, and the jet might actually handle better on grass. Fortunately, replacement parts aren't expensive at all, and FMS has mentioned to me that they're committed to ensuring that replacement parts are consistently replenished on their site. I'm pretty confident that you'll love this jet, especially if you're flying off pavement or grass that's better than what we've got to work with here. There's something undeniably cool about watching a Hornet fly, and guess what? You can own one too. If you like what you see, you can get 10% off of your first order on FMSHobby.com using the code Referral2BrosRC, or use the code 2BrosRC for $10 off $100 at any time. Thanks for watching, and send in some wing scrapes on our Discord server. See you next time.